everyone, and welcome back to our Sunday night video concert series at Temple Free Will Baptist Church, where the sun is always shining. Tonight we have a special blessing for you as we're going to be showing a video concert from the old pads. All of these groups are with us on the Singing at Sea Southern Gospel Cruise. And if you'd like to know more about that, it sails next February. And if you'd like to know more about that, please feel free to contact us. And Kay and I will give you all the details. But tonight, we hope you enjoy this video concert. While you're here, uh, we want you to take part in our virtual prayer room. Just click the link immediately below this video. And there on that page, you can leave a prayer request or you can take a prayer request and pray for that person throughout the week. Uh, as well, uh, we're playing a little game, a, a giveaway, and this Wednesday night, we're going to be giving away a Facebook portal. All you have to do to be entered for the drawing is to say something or some way that Temple has been a blessing uh, to you, something that you really enjoy about uh, our ministry. Post something there in the comment section, and that's it. That's all you have to do. You'll be entered for the drawing. I've started a new ministry on Tuesday mornings and Friday evenings called Glimpses of Glory. It's short devotional videos. Oh, I don't know, about two or three minutes long. Great way to start your day. So we hope that you can tune in and be a part of that. We hope that you can either join us or tune in for our Wednesday night worship service. Uh, Wednesday night at 7 with lots of great Southern Gospel singing and anointed Bible preaching. Now, before I go to the next slide, and we'll get to the uh, concert in just a moment, but before I go to the next slide, many of you know that Kay and I enjoy going to the movies, and right now, well, for the past several months, that's not been an option. So we decided that we're going to start showing Christian movies uh, here at the church. Uh, this week, we're going to be showing Facing uh, the Giants, and, and we're going to be showing it Friday evening and Sunday evening at 7 p.m. The slide is wrong there, so disregard that, but we're going to be showing it Friday evening and Sunday evening at 7 p.m. I can only see 14 couples in either one of those due to social distancing and we're going to be doing it in the fellowship hall. So if you would like to come and see Facing the Giants, uh, just write and let us know and, and we'll have it ready for you. All right. And uh, that's Facing the Giants Friday evening and Sunday evening at 7 p.m. But once again, reserved seating is required. As for now, let's pray together and enjoy a Southern Gospel concert by the old pads. Pray with me. Father, we thank you for this another privilege to call on your name, and we thank you, dear God, for all the great things uh, that you're doing through our ministries here at Temple Free Will Baptist Church, even during the midst of this most difficult time. Uh, we pray that you bless each and every one that's tuned in tonight, each and every home, each and every heart, and for all that's accomplished, we'll praise you in Jesus' name, and all of God's children said, Amen. We hope you enjoy the old path. and streets, too much stress and gravel and rain. I can't overcome what I don't understand, so I'm standing to the one who can. They gotta start your day every morning in prayer. The 
Yes, hallelujah, sins of the last despair. Lean on the Lord and puzzle in time. With thy breeze and stories that all right. You got to hold on tight to your thread of hope. When you feel you're at the end of your rope. Call on the Lord to solve life's riddle. And it won't get tangled in the middle. All over the house this morning, are you glad to see the old pants here? Really let them know it. Help them like this, then. Come on. Well, Adam and Eve really had it all. Life's gotten tangled since man's first fall. Then Jesus rose and the lifeline came. Strongholds break when you speak his name. Well, you gotta start your day in the morning in prayer. That's hallelujah, sins of the last despair. Lean on the Lord and puzzle in time. With life breeze and slow reason. Second thought, God's great. We're looking back over my life. God's good, so good. And it's a fact, sometimes I took the wrong track. But God's good, it's so good. And when I look where I've been and what he's brought me through. All I can say is God's been so good. But on second thought, God's been great. Blood that bought me. How great and how long, how, how long are his arms of mercy? Reach way down to the bottom, pick me up. No problem, ain't God good? No, God's great. Moving on, I've got a new song. Cause God's good, yes he's so good And when I'm faced with trials in my way God's good, yes he's so good And when I question how about this smile on my face I must reply, it's all I can say that God's been so good, oh, but on second thought, God's been great. And how great, and how great, how great is God's amazing grace. Amazing grace, the grace that saw me, great the blood that bought me. How great. They reach way down to the bottom, pick me up. No problem, ain't God good? No, God's great. How great, how great, how great is God's amazing grace? Amazing grace, the grace that saw me, 
Since I've trusted his name and my feet, they're gonna rise from the ground. I want to get closer to my God. I want to get closer to my God. I want to get closer to my God. I to my God. He's dead. I want to get nearer to the heart of God. I want to get closer to my God. I want to get closer. I want to get closer to my God. Mr. Daniel Ashmore, let him know it if you're enjoying him today. Well, folks, truly, that's our heart today to draw closer to the Lord and to one another. You know, it don't matter where you're from this morning. This is the house of God, and every one of you are welcome here. Yeah. Amen. This place was made for broken people. Sunday morning underneath the steeple Can look like a bunch of perfect people But underneath the suits and the smiling eyes Are folks who've walked through some hard times Just looking for a home place to belong, a little peace, a little hope, and thankful these old doors still swing open to the low bodies and the color bands, the disillusion and the doubters, every life train wrecked by sin. It's a place where everybody is welcome. A glimpse of glory this side of heaven. It's where the weary come for a taste of grace. And Jesus never turns anyone away. Where everyone's a friend, knowing where you've been. And there's no shame, cause there's no judging. Just family always lives here. And, uh, Nobody's in the good of this The disillusioned and the doubters Every life train wrecked by 
Steve Ladd again this morning. Really let him know it. Oh, yeah. Well, everybody loves them tenor singers anyway. Amen. <laughs> but some of y'all started smiling when he started singing a while ago. So here he is on a brand new one. I see you walking down that dead end road. I see you bend beneath a heavy load. Yeah, this world with all its heartache is like a ball and chain. You keep on praying to see heaven blue. And you keep on waiting cause that's all you know to do. When life leaves you feeling more lost and found. And you I know I've been there Feels like there's more on you than you can bear But just keep on believing And you're gonna find He will answer in his way and in his time Cause Lord knows all of your troubles Yes, the Lord knows all your struggles Before he found you well, he knows Your trials and tribulations But when you don't have a clue Well, how you make it through Lord knows When Moses needed help down by the sea He knew How tall the walls of Jericho would be Well, now he knew When the Hebrew boys were staring down the flames and that same God knows exactly what you're going through today. Lord, 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 Lord,
gonna tell you what, songs like that just fire me up. Can y'all tell? I always say that'll make a Presbyterian kick the back of his choir robe out, amen. Huh? I see some of y'all staring at me, y'all saying, my God, he's as wild as we are. Huh? Now I'm a Baptist preacher. And I was saved in a little country Baptist church, but I grew up Pentecostal holiness. Uh, I guess that'd make me Baptistal, wouldn't it? <laughs> hey, we'd have sung a song like that in the church I grew up in. They'd have just peeled the paint and slap off the wall, y'all. Uh, as a matter of fact, we hid up under the pews when we went to church. We did. Now, we weren't scared to shout when we was used to that. It was the bobby pins flying around had us worried. Uh, you let four or five of those Pentecostal women get doing like that right there. It looks like machine guns going off in there, man. They'll put your eyes out. Amen. I think it's wonderful to grow up in church, don't you? It's a great thing to know about Jesus. It'd be great if our whole country would come back to the house of God and learn of Jesus. Knowing, knowing about Jesus will change you morally but it will not change your eternal destination. The Bible says you must know him or you must be born again. You must be in relationship with Jesus. See, I grew up knowing about Jesus, but I didn't know Jesus, and there's a big difference. And at nine years old, one of my older brothers turned me on to my first joint. It didn't seem like a big deal. Our young people are pressured with it every day now. Our government's legalizing it everywhere and they're saying it's not a gateway drug and we may never prove that scientifically. But my daddy always said this, if you lay down with dogs, you'll get fleas. And if you get fleas, you will get bit. Because at 14 years old, I stuck a needle in my arm for the first time. Life took on a whole new meaning for me. 15 years old, I had to leave home. I was running the streets of Greensboro, North Carolina, where I'm from. And I was looking for my next fix. I finally got busted for dealing dope when I was about 16. And I stood before a judge and he said, well, I ought to put you in prison. But they've got a new program now that the DA is recommending. And we're going to send you to the program, but it won't work. It never works. We call them 12-step programs today, and I'm not down on 12-step programs. I think we have the most wonderful 12-step programs nowadays, especially in our churches, like Celebrate Recovery and Are You. Amen. Amen. Thank God. I thank God for what he's done in our churches to reach out to a world and let them know that, that we love them and that Jesus loves them. No matter where you are in life, you know we all got mess in our life. We all got junk to deal with in our lives. Yours may not be drugs. It may not be alcohol. It may not be porn. But we've all got some junk in our lives that we need to give to God and allow Him to take care of. Amen. But back in those days, this was kind of a brand new concept. And they didn't even call it 12-step. They called it TASK, Treatment Against Street Crime. And they told me that once you're an addict, you're always an addict. So they said, we can offer you a temporary solution to your permanent problem through the 12-step program. So I left Greensboro, North Carolina, running from the law. Scared 17-year-old boy, never had been out of Greensboro. Moved to a little town outside of Atlanta, Georgia. You know what I thought? I thought I could outrun all my problems. But you can't outrun sin. Sin will follow you anywhere and everywhere you go. By the time I was 20, 21 years old, I was using anywhere from most days three to $500 worth of dope a day. Sold drugs every day of my life just to stay high. But God allowed me to meet an old preacher man when I was 23 years old. And that old preacher, man, he was different than any other preacher I'd ever met. You see, he didn't tell me, boy, if you don't straighten up and do right, you're going to die and go to hell. I always thought that was stupid anyway. I said, boy, if I could straighten up and do right and miss hell, Jesus wouldn't have had to come and die on the cross. Amen. But instead of being judgmental and looking down on me, he made a friend out of me. 
Finally, after about four months, that old preacher man said, Littlin. He called me Littlin because I was real skinny back then, boy. You know how I knew God called me to preach? I had a sudden craving for fried chicken and got lazy. He said, Littlin, we're having friend day down at the church where I pastor. Would you be my friend? Sounds like something Jesus would do, don't it? What a novel concept. Love sinners. Would you be my friend? Well, that was long about the first of the week, and I had all intentions of going, but y'all know where I was at on Friday night. Same place I was any other night. Shoot my arm full of dope, my body full of booze, and I'm sure Satan was saying, I got him right where I want him. He ain't never going to church with that preacher. He belongs to me. I got him. But somehow I wound up in that little church on Sunday morning. I'll never forget walking into that church. I was scared to death. People giving me that eye, you know. Some of y'all know that eye. Y'all got that eye before, ain't you? Hadn't been to church since I was 15. Never had been to a Baptist church. Mama told me Baptists were dead. I don't think we got no Baptists in here this morning. <laughs> I walked in the church and started to sit down in the back. Then I remembered, Brother Brad, don't sit in the back. Everybody knows the sinners always sit in the back. <laughs> hey, y'all, they waving at me. Huh? Hey, you know what I did? I walked up and sat down in the front with the rest of the hypocrites. Huh? Careful where you sit. I was sitting on the second row of Trinity Baptist Church in College Park, Georgia. You knew what happened? Jesus didn't offer me a temporary solution to my permanent problem through a 12-step program. But glory to God, he offered me a permanent solution to my temporary problem through a one-step program. It changed my life forever. I'm telling you, there's a difference from a Friday night to a Sunday morning. Amen. The disciples were gathered in an upper room. Their world was sealed up in a garden tomb. And there in the darkness, they were so afraid, unsure of tomorrow and what they would face. Cause on Friday, the Savior Died on a cross Saturday it seemed like All hope was lost But soon there would be Cause for rejoicing Cause everything changes Come Sunday Remember the promise he made that he laid his life down. But in just three days, the grave would surrender in total defeat. Yet death would be swallowed up in victory. Yeah. 
Because everything changes. another new one for you. I like it because it says I need Jesus to walk on the water. I need him just one more time. Well, I need Jesus to walk on the water one more time, oh, one more time. Just like he did on the Sea of Galilee when his disciples were in him and fine. I need the Lord in the storm to keep me from harm to rescue me in the night. Yes, I need Jesus to walk on the water one more time. Drifting along in the boat of life, sometimes the fog has made me blind. I don't deserve his help, I know. I'm needing him now, I'm needing him so. I pray the Lord look down on me and pity my state and set me free. Walk on the water, my Jesus. Come on and walk on the water with me. Yes, I need Jesus to walk on the water one more time, oh, one more time. Just like he did on the Sea of Galilee when his disciples were reeling with pride. I need the Lord in the storm to keep me from harm, to rescue me in the night. Yes, I need Jesus to walk on the water one more time. Fell so deep I started to drown Feeling the waves pushing me down I cried at the Lord He heard my call He took my hand He wrote my soul He lifted me up so high above The danger is gone I'm not alone Now I'm walking on the water with Jesus Come on and walk on the water with me oh, I need Jesus so walk on the water Oh, one more time, oh, one more time. Just like he did on the Sea of Galilee, where his disciples were reeling with pride. I need the Lord in the storm to keep me from harm, to rescue me in the night. I need Jesus to walk on the water one more time, oh, one more time. Just like he did on the Sea of Galilee, where his disciples were reeling with pride. I need the Lord in the storm to keep me from harm, to rescue me in the night. I need Jesus to walk on the water one more time. I need Jesus to walk on the water one more time. Amen. I'm telling you what, that's high, ain't it? It's hot in here. It's it feels like my grandma's house in here. <laughs> Boy, that's what tenor singers do. They sing high, don't they? And I don't think anybody does it any better than this guy right here. Come on. Steve Ladd. Now, I know Steve's been here many times, and y'all, but y'all may not know everything about Steve. Uh-oh. It, it's all good. Y'all know Steve's only 43 years old. He's already been inducted into the Gospel Music Hall of Fame. Now, now, that's not just for Southern Gospel Music. That's the Gospel Music Hall of Fame. That's with all of your contemporary artists, black spirituals. I mean, this guy right here is absolutely incredible. How many of y'all like country music? You know, Alan Jackson came out with that Precious Memories CD. This dude's singing on it, man. He's famous. No, I'm in, infamous. Infamous? Infamous. Yeah, and there's only one problem with Steve. He's from Alabama. <laughs> Roll Tide. Oh, no. Did I see somebody doing like that out there? Lord bless y'all's heart. 
Hey, listen, when the old paths first started traveling, we had a big, beautiful orange bus. We pulled into a little old country church, Brother Brad, down there in Alabama, and they, and they was two guys going to help us load in. One of them old boys said, oh, that's a beautiful bus. Y'all just need to put a blue stripe down the side. I said, Lord God, there he goes, War Eagle. Of course, the other one spoke up real quick and said, no, you need to paint it red. Put a big old white A on the side of it. I said, we're from Georgia, man. I mean, if we was going to paint our bus red, wouldn't we put a big old black G on the side of it? <laughs> One of the boys said, yeah, man, G for Jesus. I ain't going to tell you what school he's pulling for, but I'm sure it was close to Ole Miss. <laughs> oh, we got some Mississippi Ole Miss fans. Mississippi, are you clapping? Ain't all this electricity something else? <laughs> I'm just teasing, I'm just teasing. I'm just, well, this is our Ole Miss boy. I know you've already enjoyed him singing bass, but y'all want to hear him just wear one out on that saxophone this morning.
come on. That's the Kenny G of gospel music. Amen. Daniel Ashmore. Oh, y'all starting to come to life now. I think the chains are coming off this morning. Amen. You've been walking the same old road for miles and miles. You've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies. If you're trying to fill the same old holes inside, there's a better life. There's a better life, yeah. If you got pain, well, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, oh, save him. He's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. We've all searched for the light of day in the dead of night, yeah. We've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fight. We've all run to the things we know just ain't right. Oh, but there's a better life. Yeah, there's a better life. If you got pain, oh, well, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. Oh, yeah. If you believe it, come on. If you receive come on. it, you can feel it, somebody testify. Oh, if you believe it, oh, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify, testify. Oh, yeah, if you believe it, yeah, if you receive it, you can feel it, somebody testify. Pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. If you can feel it, somebody testify. Oh, come on, I can't hear you. Somebody ought to testify this morning of his goodness, his grace, his mercy, his long suffering, his endurance. He's worthy of our praise this morning. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Y'all know what we've been in here doing this morning? We've been saying so. He is all that he said he would be and so much more. I found him to be a faithful friend, a confidant, one that I could depend on, one that would never let me down, a friend that sticketh closer than a brother in my life. I'm telling you, he's good this morning. On second thought, he's great this morning. He's God this morning. And besides him, there is none other. He's God. Amen. Y'all about to wear me out. I feel like a black preacher. <laughs> Woo! I sure am glad Jesus got a hold of me for the Baptist did. Amen. They told me it was going to wear off, but I've never gotten over that I'm under the blood. Amen. It ain't never wore off yet. Huh? I think it's been 28 years and still going. 
It's amazing what God can do. Hey, how many of y'all seeing us for your very first time? Just wave at me like this. Where y'all been? Where have we been? Well, we started in October of 2003. Tim and I right here. Started as a trio, had no idea that we'd ever do this for a living, Brother Brad. We just want to go out and share Jesus. I felt like if he could save a dope addict like me, could save anybody. Yeah, then I met Tim. He's a preacher's kid. And if he can save a preacher's kid, he can show enough to save anybody. <laughs> we started traveling around all these little churches just, just telling people about Jesus. Still the best message ever told. Jesus. No other name like Jesus. Oh, the most powerful, wonderful name. The lovely name of Jesus. Several years in our ministry, we met a man by the name of Dr. Jerry Vines, pastor of the largest church in the Southern Baptist Convention. You know, just big name. I didn't know who he was. He, he walked by, you know, he's real slick like that. He said, I like you boys. I said, well, I reckon that's a good thing. I didn't know who he was. I, I saved in a little country church. I didn't know the difference between a Southern Baptist, an Independent Baptist, a Free Will Baptist. I didn't know the difference. I was just glad to be saved. Boy, was it a good thing. And God began to open up doors. He was using us on those John 316 conferences. You know what that, you know what that means? God can save anybody, anywhere, anytime. Amen. Huh? Aren't you glad of that? God began opening up doors in all those big churches, and then then we met Dr. Charles Stanley. Y'all ever watch In Touch? How many of y'all watch In Touch? Well, we've been on there. Matter of fact, we're kind of becoming regulars there. He just had us September the 1st, did a recording, so you guys will see us if you look. And uh, started having radio success 2014. We were blessed to have four number one songs in a row in an 18-month span. That's a God thing. That was record-setting. They said it had never been done by another quartet. I said, we ain't never sung for number ones anyway. We've always sung for number one. Amen. That's what it's about. It ain't about us this morning. It's all about Him. We were so excited about what God was doing. We've been traveling for 13 years, and you know, nobody knew who we were. Well, well, what at that time, what, 11 years? They thought we were brand new. I said, man, we've been at this a long time. Exciting. Families were excited. We were excited. The record company was real excited. About that time, Tim's daughter started having some health issues. She was a teenage girl. and One day we were scheduled to leave out, preacher. and Tim called. He said, we've been down here at the Children's Hospital in Atlanta all day. Something's going on with Brianna. They're running tests, trying to find out what's wrong. She's really sick. But I'm coming. About two hours passed. He said, well, I'm coming on. They can't find out what's wrong, and I'm sure she's going to be okay. I'm coming on. He started toward the bus, and he called me just to cry. He said, I can't go. They don't expect Brianna to make it through the night. Now, I know God's not given us a spirit of fear, but of a sound mind. Romans 8, 28, still in the word of God. You hear me? All things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose. That's true because the word of God is truth. What the word of God is. And it sounds real spiritual until it's your all things. When it's your all things and your heart's breaking. It's your all things when your child's laying in a hospital bed and you're wondering, God, is my baby girl going to die? It's your all things when your kid's strung out on the road somewhere and you're wondering, God, you delivered me. When are you going to deliver, deliver them? It's your all things when your mom and daddy's strung out on meth somewhere and you're saying, God, is this all there is? For my life, 
It's a little different when it's your all things, ain't it? When your kid's in prison, your husband's locked up in a jail somewhere. Hey, it's a big difference then. That's where we were, scared to death. We still had to go on, and Tim stayed behind. We got us a fill in. He called me and said, well, they found out what's wrong with Brianna. She's got a rare kidney disease that affects one in every 300,000 of our youth. Her kidneys quit developing when she was only eight years old. Now she's a young adult. They can't keep up. And she's dying, Douglas. The only thing we knew to do was pray. We started calling everybody and reaching out to everybody saying, pray for Brianna. Did I mention God hears prayers? He heard our prayer. That little girl made it through the night. Then they started running tests on all the family and found out that her mom was a perfect match. They did a kidney transplant. I'd like to report some good news to y'all. That little girl now is 22 years old in college, serving God, not one sign of rejection. God's still God this morning. He still answers prayer. He knows exactly where you are in your life. He hears you when you call out his name. He's God this morning. Here's the question. Here's the question. Is he the God that you know? He's the God I know this morning. Some think he's just a mystery. A man be thought a fantasy. A fable that's been passed down through the years. They say if he's really there, he'd stop the wars and hear the prayers in the pain and suffering down here. There's so many reasons why so many die. But all I know is I know I just couldn't live without the God. the sun and stars fell from his hand but I believe that he spoke and here we are and I didn't see it for myself when a tempted man and woman fell but I believe that it surely broke his heart cause right then he knew how much that sin would come Take a savior hanging on a rugged cross. The God I know, He sent His only Son. He sacrificed, then He paid the price. He lived and died for everyone in a broken world where there's so
Have you enjoyed the old path so far? Come on, let them know it. Yeah. <laughs> wow, I'm fired up today, boy. I might have to let these, hey, I might have to let these old guys take their Geritol, man, so they can keep up with me. I just had open heart surgery last Valentine's Day, and I'm feeling good this morning. Amen. Aren't you glad Jesus is still the great physician? Amen. Say, what do you mean he's the great physician? You had to have open heart surgery. Yeah, but he's the one that made them dudes be able to do something like that. Cut a man in half, take veins out of his leg, put it in his chest, put him back together, and let him get up here and dance like this. Huh? That's a God thing, man. Well, they say there's only two things you can do after a song like that. That's preach or take up a love offering. And they tell me either one to kill the service. That ain't going to happen here today, oh, is it? It already has. Y'all done shut down on me. Start talking about money, folks, just shut down on you. No, the Bible says that faith, here's the way we came today. We came by faith. The Bible says faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. How shall they hear without a preacher? How shall he preach lest he be sent? We're called of God, but we're sent by the New Testament church. You know the place where we were last night? Well, last week we, we were in South Carolina. People in South Carolina, yeah, I'm talking about them old southern rednecks down there. They sent us up here to share the greatest message that's ever been shared. That's the gospel message of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, God's been doing some great things in our ministry. The reason most of you guys have never heard of us after Brianna had her kidney transplant, Tim was stressed out, was on the road all the time. And during that same time period, my boy, Little Douglas, never name your children after you unless you want them to act like you. <laughs> he started down the same road that I traveled as a young man. He was about 15 or 16 years old, started doing dope, got hooked on meth, became a meth dealer, and went to prison. He was in prison during that time period. He was scheduled to be out of prison January of 2016. Brianna had the kidney transplant in the summer of 15. We didn't know if her kidney was, if that kidney was going to be rejected by her body or not. Those things are touch and go. Tim was stressed. And you know what? I wanted to be home when my boy got home. I felt like he needs his daddy to be there to support him through this time of transition in his life. You know, there's more dope in prison than there are on the street. I wanted to be home when he got home. I wanted to help him and encourage him. So we came off the road. God instituted the home first. Record company was like, four number one songs, y'all finally on the top. Please don't do that. We said, God instituted the home first. Then the church, then the country. They got it backwards now. We went home to be with our family, and we're glad that we did. And I'd like to report some good news to you. It ain't all been the pie in the sky and the great mind by the boy got out of prison, went back to prison. Yeah, he went to church. Met a girl at church. You know what her mama did? Went straight to the preacher and said, I don't want my daughter dating some thug that just got out of prison. <laughs> you know what he did? He said, Daddy, they'll take me just like I am out there. And he went right back out, needle in his arm, and back to prison. But it don't end there. You know where he's at today? 23 months clean. Amen. <laughs> Yeah. We decided when we came back on the road full time January of last year that we were going to do things differently. God's given us a burden and a heart for the addict and those affected by it. There's hardly not a person in this building this morning that's not been affected by addiction. Family members, friends, loved ones affected by it. We started doing these 180 rallies. That means turn around, go a different direction. We do what we did this morning. We share the gospel. People come to know Jesus. But here's what we do. We go out on a Friday night. All you gospel fans are there. Christians are there. But we've got point people in that certain town that we're going to. And they've got all the RU meetings, Celebrate Recovery meetings, Teen Challenge meetings, all the intervention programs, all the halfway houses. And they bring them all in. And we do what we did this morning. Some of them will come to know Jesus. Some of them already know Jesus. 
They go back to their perspective places and when they get out of those treatment centers, they say there was a church down there that loved on us just like we were. They didn't look down on the way that we look, where we acted or where we've been and we can get plugged in there and they can be discipled and those same people will be standing up here one day doing the exact same thing I've been doing for the past 28 years because somebody loved them enough to show them Jesus. Oh, I've enjoyed this this morning. It's not often we go to a church where boy, the, the, the presence of God is evident here in your lives. Amen. And we're glad that the Spirit flows from breast to breast here. You've got a wonderful church family. Don't you thank God for a pastor that loves the Lord, that is following? Do you thank God for your preacher this morning? Yeah. I can walk into a church and tell if the preacher's done put the brakes on before I get there. <laughs> he's worried to death because you know he's one of those that stands like this and he already doesn't, he doesn't see me on YouTube. <laughs> huh? He's, oh Lord God, I hope they don't think he's Pentecostal. <laughs> Do you know? But I appreciate a church where we can be used of the Lord. So thank y'all so very much. Remember to pray for us as we go out. Pray for us, not just for safety, but for souls. Time's drawing near, folks. We got to reach them while we can. We're going to hear a couple more songs from them, all right? I can. Well, I must have crossed a million valleys and shed a million tears. But when I come to the river Jordan, hallelujah, then I'll have no fear. Oh, then I'll have no fear. Cause I got a one more river to cross, one more mountain to climb. I'm going through with Jesus, hallelujah, holding to his nail scarred hand, yeah. holding to his nail scarred hand. There's been a lot of people talking about me since I walked this narrow way. Oh, but this is just another little valley. I came through it when I prayed. I climbed a lot of high mountains. Across the lot of raging streams, but when I see old Jordan cold and dark, that'll be the last for me. Oh, that'll be the last for me. Oh, well, I got one more river to cross, the one more mountain to climb, one more valley that I gotta go through, leaving my trouble behind. Come on, aren't you glad that we can? 
We can depend on his nail-scarred hand. Hey, Amen. I'm glad I'm going through. I'm going through. Huh? The devil's going to lay some roadblocks along the way. Oh, we're going to have some faults and we're going to have some failures along the way. Some of us might even do things that we never thought we'd ever do. But you know what? If we belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what I found out when the Lord saved me? Check this out. The Lord saved me Father's Day 1992. I, I, I got up from an altar where I thanked the Lord for what he did for me at my seat. I, mean, I couldn't even get out of my seat. I'd been saved. I come to an altar thanking the Lord for what he'd done in my life. And I stood up in front of all those people and I said I ain't the same man I was when I came in here I couldn't hardly wait to get home and call my mama and tell my mama what the Lord had done I guarantee you Bobby Pins flew all over that kitchen when I called her. as soon as I got off the phone with mama my phone rang and one of my buddies called he said hey man you got anything good You know what hit me right then? I'm going to have to face the same people, the same pressures, and the same problems that I faced before the Lord saved me that day. The only difference is I wasn't going to have to face them alone. Huh? I wasn't going to have to face them alone. You know what I told him? I said, yeah, man, come on over. He got to the house. He said, what you got? I said, it's killer, man. He said, what? It's killer. I met Jesus today. He said, oh, man. My granddaddy was a preacher. He said, you won't make it six months. You'll be right back. I said, I'm telling you, he changed my life today. And you need to know him too, Kenny. You need to know the Lord. He said, I don't want nothing to do with that. He left my house. About a year later, I saw Kenny at a corner store. He said, hey, Douglas, still going to church? I said, going to church? Man, I'm going to be preaching my first sermon next Sunday. He said, do what? He said, I got to see this, man. I'm coming. Where are you going to be preaching? I said, it's about an hour and a half away over in College Park. He said, I'll be there. I got up that Sunday morning, and I cried most of the time. You know, I had me about an 11-page outline, and I preached about five minutes. All I could say was, this is the day of salvation. Behold, now's the time of repentance. And that day I watched old Kenny come running down to an altar and he met Jesus the same way I did. On his terms. On his terms. See, Jesus said, No man cometh unto the Father but by me, but no man cometh unto me except the Spirit of my Father draw him. Oh, I could have led him in some prayer that day that he came to my house to get some dope and told him, boy, if you'll just do this and do that, the Lord will save you too, and, 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 and nothing would be changed in his life. You can come to church, you can be baptized. The only difference is you'll go from a dry center to a wet center. You can be baptized in every mud hole from here to Georgia until every tadpole knows your social security number, and it will not change who you are. You must be drawn of the Spirit of God and you must come on His terms totally surrendered, completely surrendered to the Lord Jesus Christ. I mentioned knowing about Jesus and knowing Jesus. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. You know what the difference is between knowing about Jesus and knowing Jesus? It's believing. That word believe is a verb. Amen. It's kind of like that word love. You women are going to remind all of us men come Valentine's Day. Love ain't just a word, buddy. And don't come in here with no chocolates and flowers this year. I want something with a little bling on it. 
Now, y'all going to find it hard to top what I did last year. I gave my wife a brand new heart. But Jesus, God topped it. The Bible says that for God so loved the world, say there's that verb, that he gave. You hear that, man? Loving's giving. Don't forget that next week. God so loved each and every one of us that he gave the very best he's had. His only begotten son, the glory of heaven, gave him for each and every one of you. No matter where you are. You can be in here, you can be a dope addict, you can be a drunk, you can be a Sunday school teacher, a deacon. Hey, we had a youth pastor saved one day. He'd been the youth pastor of the church for seven years. He said, boy, I bet they fired him. No, they had finally had him a saved youth pastor. You know what I'm saying? Hey, they were thrilled to death. Amen. But you have to believe in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him or believes in him. Either one's the same. You put an E-T-H or an an S on the end of that word, it suddenly becomes a power progressive verb. You know what that means? It's always in the present tense. That means it continually takes action. You could say, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever continually takes action in him shall not perish. Well, who is he? The greatest commentary on the word of God is the word of God itself. That's John 3.16, but John 1.1 says this, sets it all up. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Whosoever continually takes action in the word shall not perish but have everlasting life. You say, does that mean if I mess up I can be lost again? No. It's kind of like this. What do builders do? Build. Took a man from Alabama to say that. (laughs) What do builders do? What do painters do? Glad you said that. I said that one day and a little lady said, Drink. I'm a painter by trade. (laughs) She said, drink. (laughs) No, they paint. So if builders build and painters paint, then what do believers do? You know what believing is? It's an action word. Take an action in the word of God. Whosoever shall call, there's that verb, upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Here's my favorite. This is my personal favorite. Jesus said, Whosoever cometh unto me, I will in no wise cast out. You know what that means? Whosoever comes to me, I'll receive you just like you are. That's cool right there. That's cool right there. You ain't got to fix nothing first. You ain't got to make nothing right first. All you've got to do is be drawn of the Holy Ghost of God. And I know he's here this morning, and I know he's drawing you because Jesus said, if I'll be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. And he's been lifted up this morning. Only thing left for you to do is believe. Well, how can I do that? Well, here's what we're going to do this morning. I don't know how you do it around here, but I'll tell you how we're going to do it this morning. This is what God's going to do. We're going to stand all over the building and they're going to sing a song. Some of y'all are going through some mess this morning. You know what you need to do? You need to practice one of those verbs. The Bible says to cast all your care upon him because he careth for you. That means he continually cares for you. Not just the day you met Jesus, but each and every day, every second, every minute of your life, he cares for you. He wants you to take all of your burdens, all your cares, and all your troubles and cast them on him. Because he cares for you. Now there's some of you this morning need to come and get born again. You need to surrender, totally surrender your life to Jesus. You need to believe. I want us all to pray for God to do that this morning, okay? Can we do that? Lord Jesus, we love you. We ask you to use this invitation this morning. May we completely, totally surrender our lives and all of our cares and troubles to you this morning. Dear Lord Jesus, take every addiction, take every affliction, away from our lives this morning. We'll give you glory for it. 
In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Don't you hesitate to come. Come I've right had now. Many tears come on, you need to be sorrow. you need to be coming to Jesus. I've had questions for tomorrow. There've been times I didn't know right from wrong. Then every situation. Come on. God gave a Some of you need to be praying for your families to be saved. Trials come to only make me That's what this altar's for. Through it all, through, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, through it all. I thank him for the mountains and I thank him for the valleys thank him for the times he's brought me through because if we never had a problem we wouldn't know that God could solve them we wouldn't know what faith in God could do through it all through it all Trust in Jesus, I've learned to trust in God through it all, through it all. I've learned to depend upon His word. Sing it with us one more time. Through it all, through it all. Come on, church. Through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God through it all, through it all. I've learned to depend upon His Word. Sing this, and I'll never know how much it cost to see my sins upon that cross. No, I'll never. Upon that cross, now sing. So here I am to worship. Here I am to bow. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together. sing. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Sing it to him. So here I am to worship here i am to bow down here i am to say that you're my god you're all together lovely all together worthy all together wonderful to
you enjoyed the old pass tonight. I mean, them boys can sing. I'm already looking forward to seeing them on the ship in February. Once again, if you'd like to know more about the singing at Sea Southern Gospel Cruise, write us, and Kay and I will be glad to give you all of the details. Thanks for tuning in. We hope that you can either join us or tune in online for our Wednesday night worship service, Wednesday night at 7, with lots of great Southern Gospel singing and anointed Bible preaching. Uh, remember, we're going to be doing the Christian movie nights this Friday night and next Sunday night at 7 o'clock. Reserved seating is required however. Thanks for all that you do. Thanks for your time. And we'll look forward to seeing you next time at Temple Free Will Baptist Church, where the sun is always shining.